Hello, everyone. We are so excited that you're here today. And we have one of my favorite people on earth on the podcast today, GSD Mode King Joshua Smith. Josh, how are you? Yeah, doing amazing, doing amazing. I'm truly honored to be here, and this is going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, I'm so excited. So we're going to get right down to the nitty gritty. And I'm hearing teams right now and agents right now that are down 30, 40, 50 percent. And so they've got to pivot. They've got to shift. Give us some things that are really practical that they can do to get back on track and start increasing business. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the first thing is the understanding of, look, because the game has changed. When I say the game, I mean, the overall real estate game is the same, but I mean, the economic climate that we're in is we went through a fundamental shift in about middle of 2022, which we've all experienced. I think we all get that and understand that. But the, let's first talk about the reason as to why so many people are struggling in this market. You know, they haven't yet switched from d playing defense to what I call playing strategic offense. So that's shift number one that we got to go out there and do. So look, if we look at, okay, 2012 through middle 2022, longest economic expansion, longest bull market recorded history, longest real estate expansion recorded history. It was just an amazing time where you could kind of show up, kind of be consistent, kind of work hard, just kind of wing it, not have to treat your business as a business and go out there and make multiple six figures. So a lot of people got so accustomed to that. And that gave us ability, well, yeah, we could play defense. You know, where right now, Again, it's about strategic offense. So what do I mean by strategic offense? Okay, strategic, by strategy, I mean we've got to make sure that we are honing in on when it comes to our client acquisition strategies of who has the highest probability of needing to buy or sell, needing our services in this market. So we've got to operate. We can't shotgun things out anymore. we got to operate like a sniper with a sniper scope. So example of that is, Okay, things that maybe historically worked, like, okay, I go out there and circle prospect, whether it's door knocking, direct mail, or, or you know, through phone calls. I could go out there and circle prospect, and if I hit my numbers, okay, I could go out there and yield okay results or decent results with that. Now, today, that's going to yield extremely low results, and why? You know, you got three-fourths of homeowners locked in at that three or four percent or lesser rates. They may want to sell, but they don't have the pain. The pain isn't deep enough where they need to sell. Human behavior is this is if the pain of our current situation, if that pain does not outweigh the pain of the change, they're not going to make the change, right? So it's like, maybe they have pain with the current situation. They want an extra bedroom. They want no longer like their neighborhood or whatever. But if the pain I'm buying at today's prices and getting an interest rate at today's rates, if that pain outweighs the pain of staying put and tolerating that pain, they're going to tolerate that. That's why we're seeing turnover rates so low and kind of this gridlock with listing volume. So, so we can't go out there and shotgun. We got to operate like snipers. And again, thinking about, okay, who has the highest probability of needing my services in this market? So an example of that, let's just say we want to be very listing focused right now. Okay, there's five niches that are converting best right now in this market. So we got expired, so you got for sale by owners. Always have been great, always are great. We don't know their specific pain, but we know that they've raised their hand. That, so they're, they're signifying that there's some pain there. But then there are three other niches. We got absentee owners, you got investors getting crushed in this current climate. You got divorces. So if you look at divorce as an example, you know, this is a niche that I've been hitting hard for about the last 12 months. Um, number one reason for divorce is financial hardship right now because it's the most unaffordable time to be alive as a U.S. citizen. When we're speaking in general terms, anybody that's alive today, this is the most difficult time financially that anybody's experienced that's alive today. Just speaking in general mass terms, right? Um, okay, so divorces are on the skyrocket. Well, that's a situation change the probability of them not living under that same rooftop as they go through this transition very high, probability of them needing to sell to split that asset as they're going through this, again, very high. So that's what I mean by targeting people that need to buy or need to sell. So that's what I mean by strategy. And then by offense, I mean- okay, Hold on, just stay there. So stay there on the divorce and the absentee owners. So would you suggest they contact divorce attorneys, try to build relationships them? Um, are you talking about very specifically, if they want to target people who are getting a divorce, what would you do? Yeah. Okay. And that's, that, that's a perfect segue into what, I, what I'm talking about with your playing offense. Because that's the number one question I get when I'm talking about the divorce niche. Now, okay. Yeah. I can go after divorce attorneys. And I'm not saying that's a bad idea, but that's me playing defense. Defense meaning I'm waiting for people to feed me business, waiting for deals to come to me. Right, right now we need to be playing offense. So by offense, it's okay, what can I do that, that is in my full control that I can take daily actions on 
to put deals together. So for me, I'm going and getting the listings and I'm calling them direct. So whether it be any one of these niches, I'm not reliant on, you know, partner relationships, attorney partners or whatever, you know, just so like, well, okay, we're targeting pre-foreclosures because those are on the massive rise right now too. You know, you got almost 11% of all FHA loans right now in 30 plus day default, right? So, um, um, so but I'm not waiting for bankruptcy attorneys, not saying to not go develop those relationships. That's a good kind of secondary hustle with that. But for our primary strategies, it's what is in our full control that like we got to put our fate in our own hands. So like I'm going getting the divorce numbers direct or the absentee owners number direct and reaching out to them directly so I can control my own business. But so when you say that, I mean, are you saying calling people and just being like, hey, how's your marriage? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So if we want to. Now, my favorite niche, and we can get into a couple of them, my favorite niche for this market is absentee owners, hands down. But divorces is, is, is uh, you know, again, all of these convert really well. So so with that being said, you know, um, let's first talk about what you said with with phones, right? Um, so this is where we really have to factor in what our personal timeline is. So like an example, okay, right now, like YouTube crushes it, you know, social media organic crushes it. We're blessed to be in an industry where everything works, nothing doesn't. You know, um, um, certain things might convert better than others, but you know, a common thing that I get agents reach out to me like, oh, well, you know, I want to focus on YouTube and I want to focus on social organic, but then I'll ask them, well, how long can you go with a paycheck or without a paycheck free in trouble? And they'll be like four months. I'm like, okay, here's the conundrum. Like if you do everything right with YouTube and you don't make one mistake, which is difficult enough as is, it's going to be about a year before you start seeing consistent business coming from that. So you're going to be out of money before you start to see the fruits of those labors. So if your timeline is very fast, so here's this more specific example. You know, like I have a very high converting expired letter, but my average listing that I get from that expired letter reaches out after letter number eight, which is five months post expiration. So, okay, I could start doing my letters. Again, it's a great converting letter, but I know that it's about five to six months out before I'm going to start seeing consistent listing business come from that. Or if I need a listing by the end of this week, okay, I'm going to have to pound the phones. So this is where you know, the, our medium of how we're going to go out there because you, you've got the strategy of whom you're targeting, but then we got to identify, okay, what's the medium? What's the vehicle that we're going to go out there and acquire that business? So the quickest way, you know, on the listing side of the business is going to be the phones. It's going to be the highest converting and the fastest. You know, um, so then from there, when it comes to, your because what you were alluding to there is scripting, right? And based on each lead source, like we got to understand, we got to know what our timeline is so we can come up with our own strategy. But then from there, we got to know, psychology and timeline per lead source. So an example, how I speak to a Zillow lead is way different than a Facebook or a Google pay-per-click lead. How I speak to a divorce is way, somebody going through a divorce is way different than an absentee owner, way different than an expired. Yeah, right? And then they, they so what, that's the psychology, allows us to know what our messaging needs to be. And then timeline allows us to know how long and how frequent we need to follow up to maximize those conversions. Because now we're in this, again, this massive transaction volume decline market. You guys just got to understand that transaction volume is, is the lowest it's been since 1995. We have 27% more human beings in the U.S. Uh, before that time, and we have 3x the amount of realtors. So we've never seen this type of a competitive landscape in the real estate industry. So you can't afford to not maximize your conversions in this market. Again, 2012 to 2022, we could be lax a days ago. We could kind of work these leads, and there's enough business going around where you could go out there and, and make good money you know, even if you had bad processes and skill set. No longer is that the case. All that low hanging fruit is dried up. You know, um, so then from there we gotta match the messaging. So, okay, when it comes to divorces, and then this really comes into skill set. Like you gotta learn how to pre-frame because a lot of people have resistance to the phones, but it's not because they like look, if your mom calls you or like, you know, Chantelle and I have been, you know, best friends for a long, long time. You know, right? So when Chantelle calls, like I'm excited to talk to her. Right. So it's not that we don't have a problem with the phone. What we have a problem with is we don't know exactly what to say to have highly effective, good conversations with these cold prospects that we're reaching into, right? So it's that fear of getting, you know, getting our butts ripped on that phone, right? Um, um, you know, so then from there, if you learn how to have effective, good conversations and you learn tonality, you learn pacing, you learn how to pre-frame correctly, I can promise you you're going to have highly effective, good conversations. The worst my conversations ever go is, no, thank you, not interested right now. Get nobody screaming, nobody hanging, you know, nobody telling me to F off. No. Now, when it comes to, and again, scripting and, and our approach, and, the, this is, and I'll break down my script here in a second, but it's really, I want you guys to really understand this because 70% of sales comes from our verbal and nonverbal cues. 
Like, I don't care how good your script or pitch or offer is. If people don't listen to it, it's going to convert ineffectively. So the consumer today, now this is going to, this, this is the number one thing that if you can master what I'm saying here, like it'll massively increase your conversions, regardless of whether your business is inbound, outbound, because we're talking about the art of having effective conversations. So the consumer today wants the information that they want and need to make their best informed decision, but they want to do that in a safe, non-pushy, non-pressure, non-salesy environment. And human beings are more sensitive and easily, more easily triggered than any other times in our lifetimes. So the second somebody is triggered and now people are just, it's just the way society is. I'm not saying it's a good thing or bad thing, but the way that it is, right? If people are being sold, they get now triggered, right? So when, when somebody feels that they're being sold, they go the, it initiates the crop portion of the brain, initiates fight or flight mode, and they're looking to use that fight or flight. That's where you get the hard hangups, the hard shutdowns, the, so I call that passive listening mode. And we've all been there where somebody's talking, but we're not actually listening to what they're saying. We're just thinking about what am I going to respond or what's my rebuttal going to be? Yeah, right. But if you're not actively, like, again, I don't care how good your pitch off or script is, if they're not listening to it, it's going to be ineffective. So we got to keep them out of passive listening mode and active listening mode. Um, okay. So then from there, I found with divorces, if the word divorce leaves your lips, your mouth before they bring it up. You want to talk about some hardcore, insane resistance, which I get it. it. They should, right? It's very intrusive. It's icky. It's, you know, so for me, the best script that I've found for high converting with divorces is kind of a generalized circle prospecting script. So when I reach them out to that, let's just say, you know, the lead Susan, right? So, hey, so I'll just go through my script and I'll kind of break down the effectiveness of it. So, hey, is this, is this Susan? Yeah, this is Susan. Hey, Susan, this is just Joshua Smith with XYZ Real Estate. I wanted to I want to see if you could help me out with something really fast. And look, I understand this is probably a shot in the dark, something you're probably not interested in. And if you're not, no worries at all. Just let me know. And again, no problem at all. But I just wanted to just want to run a passage just in case it might be something that you might have some possible interest in. Yeah, I'm not sure if you're aware of this or not, but there's currently more buyers looking to buy in your neighborhood than there are homes for sale like yours. So for homeowners like yourself that are maybe considering thinking of selling, now is such a great time to do so because of all this buyer demand. Homes are selling for fast and selling for top dollar. And again, like I said, this is probably just a shot in the dark. But the reason why I'm reaching out today, I'm actually calling all the homeowners in your neighborhood just like yourself. And I just wanted to just want to see if you've been at all considering possibly thinking of selling and then just pause. Right. So, OK, with that, now they don't. Now I am targeting just them, but they don't feel targeted. How do you, how are they getting that phone number? So if I want to target the divorce people and I'm having that conversation, are are these people that I'm contacting? Am I doing a Facebook ad for it? Am I doing no nope. nope. phone number from to call? Yeah, yeah. So great question. Now you can do all of the above, but for me, again, I'm gonna hit the phones. It's the highest conversions. So like right now, divorces, we have a six percent conversation to to listing taken rate. Um, so that's where you're going to get the highest and the quickest conversions. So then from there, the great thing is all of our data. The second you go get a credit report ran, within five seconds, your data is being sold on the open market. So everybody's data, it's all, you know, you like you go out there, you got to go buy it. So I go through a company called Super. So like Super, like Superwoman, and then M is in Mary, and then Power. SuperMPower.com. That's right? all great skip trace data. So as soon as people file for divorce, it's public, you know, it's public data. So they, they're a great data aggregator with high, you know, highly accurate information. You know, um, so I just go in there and buy it, you know, from there. Now, let me go through that preframe because that's the same preframe that I use on FISBOs, use on divorces, use on agent recruits, great for agent recruits. You know, but what, when I reach out to them, okay, I led with, uh, hey, this is probably a shot in the dark, something that you're probably not interested in, right? So right out of the gate, like what salesperson leads with, uh, hey, this is something probably not even interested in, right? So it creates curiosity. And the whole point of the, the what I call the pre-frame opener of any sentence before we get into scripting is so then that they will listen and we can have an effective conversation, right? Um, and we can go through some examples like on the buy side too, if you want to hear some of my pre-frames there. Um, but then from there, then when I follow that up with, the, you know, hey, this is probably a shot in the dark, something you're probably not interested in. And if you're not, no worries at all. Just let me know. And again, no problem at all. That already gives them permission that it's okay to say no so they don't feel boxed in. So it creates curiosity and it removes that threat. So I'm keeping them out of fight or flight mode. Then from there, now I, I went a little faster just because of essence of time on this podcast. I slow things down a little bit because the slower that you speak, the the more they have to hold on to every single word, right? So you know, I'm going to slow it down, soft, neutral tone, 
Um, and, and you can even see in there, I'm very intentionally including even stutters. Because what are we taught in sales? Oh, you got to be polished. You got to talk fast. So it's not about not just sounding like other realtors. It's also about not sounding like any other sales experience that they recently had because that's going to trigger fight or flight. And it's funny because the number one thing I get from agents that, you know, the struggle with when it comes to lead follow-up is they're like, I know I'm in sales and I got to be good at sales, but I just don't want to be that salesy, annoying realtor. Am I good? Because nobody else wants you to be either. It's the most ineffective way to go out there and sell is be that salesy, high-pressure salesperson. I call it selling without selling. So yes, we're selling. Yes, we're leading the process, but the greatest salespeople, you'll never know that you're even being sold to. And that old school, high pressure, salesy, it is the most least ineffective way to go out there and sell just based on how human beings are wired now today. Mm, so good. So, okay. So if someone wants to list one home week, tell us exactly like what, how many calls they need to make. What are the activities they need to do if they want to list one home per week? Yeah. So here, here, here now I'll give some baselines for everybody to, to target and hit, you know, with this, right? Um, now with this, this is the importance of you tracking your own data, tracking your own numbers. So you kind of know the own truth of your own business because we're all going to have different skill sets. All, But let's just assume that you've got a great process and your skill sets dialed in and you're targeting the right people. So I'll just give a baseline, you know, based on, you know, divorces and absentee owners. Um, cause the conversions are, 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 you know, almost identical there as far as the listing taken up front. So then from there, okay, I know that it's going to be 500 aisles, 50 conversations to one listing taken. So then from there, okay, if I want to list one house consistently weekly, and I'm going to be hitting my, you know, prospecting calls Monday through Friday. So we got to break down and know what our daily KPIs are that we got to hit. Um, so then from there, I know it's going to take a hundred dials, 10 conversation, 10 conversations per day, Monday through Friday. So if I'm using a dialer, so an example schedule of this would be like, okay, get in the office at 7 a.m., any urgent emails that you need to, need to you know, jump on, uh, maybe updating any leads that came in the night before in your CRM and then prepping for your daily calls. Then 8 a.m. to 10 a.m., I'm going to be breaking out because it takes, if you're using a dialer, it takes you about 50 dials an hour and five conversations per hour. Um, so then I'm, I'm going to do my calls, you know, let's just say absentee on our divorce calls from 8 to 10 a.m., 10 to 10.30 a.m. would be miscellaneous follow-up, like sphere of influence, past clients. Maybe I'm also stacking in some internet leads, Some you know, so I have 30 minutes a day of miscellaneous follow-up. Then 10.30 to, to noon would be client updates, emails, any paperwork I got to do. Um, and I'm a big believer on win your day by noon, right? So meaning, okay, those core KPIs that you must hit inside your business. And for me, there's three KPIs. When, when those of you that don't know what KPI, a key performance indicator, like what are the three most important metrics, three important, most important targets they get to hit daily and weekly. And for me, those three things are always going to be dials, conversations, and appointments set. Because if I hit those, everything else comes into play. Like I'm going to hit those closings, right? So I make sure that those are done by noon every single day. So then that way, noon on, I call pounding the pavement time. That's where I'm going to stack all my appointments, listing appointments, buyer consultations, client showings, you know, whatever, because the longer the day goes on, the more fires are going to come up, the more disruptions are going to happen. Plus, as human beings, we just have more willpower in the morning, right? It's like I, I never I never down a carton of ice cream first thing in the morning. Like I down that carton of ice cream after a long day, after I'm exhausted, I'm tired, and my willpower is just shot. It's kind of like Brian Tracy's eat your frog first. So it's just win your day by noon because then the rest of your day can go to hell, have all these fires got put out, get distracted. Okay, that way you still win. You know, so- okay. So let me ask you this. So what I just heard you say is if you want to have a listing per week, you're going to have to make 500 calls for the week, which breaks down into 100 calls per day. And what, you know, you and I have, you know, talked with John Cheplak. We've done coaching with him and all kinds of other stuff. And his big thing is, you know, you make three commitments per week or three commitments per day that you do, and you do it in a group format and have people hold you accountable for doing that. And so one thing is, is that when when someone's listening to this, you know, and they're thinking 100 calls per day, break it down. So like you talked about superempower.com. So you would buy leads from superempower.com where you would get some lead sources from that of people maybe who would be, you know, getting a divorce or whatever. And then do you have like a specific dialer that you're using? Yeah. 
And so talk about that specifically. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, and again, in my daily KPIs or weekly KPIs, you know, the three, the, you know, three targets is you spoke to, for me, that's always going to be dials, conversations, and appointments set. Cause those are all things in my control. You can't always control it. Like, yeah, you can do things to get your appointment show rate higher. Yeah. But you can't always control if somebody shows. You can't always control if they sign. You can't. Okay. But the three metrics that I'm in full control over that will then dictate everything else. I look at it kind of like, okay, if I'm, if I'm working out and I want, like if I'm dieting and I want the scale to show me what I want it to show me, okay, I only need to jump on that scale once a week, maybe even once a month. What I need to focus on is, you know, what's my daily caloric intake and what's my daily activity. So if my target is to lose two pounds a week, I know I got to be in a 500 caloric deficit per day. And then from there, based on my goals, I'll make up what my macros are going to be. But then it's, okay, if I hit that, okay, the scale is going to show me what I needed to show. So for me, those three targets are always going to be dials, conversations, appointments set. And again, this is when I'm going for buyers, sellers, agent recruits, or recruiting agents, same thing. You know, um, then from there, okay, we go, we get the data. However, you get the data, whether it's expired, FISBOs, divorces, absentee owners. Um, I'm going to get that data. Then yes, I'm going to use a dialer. I'm going to use a dialer for two reasons, right? Number one, and then you've got to use the right dialer, um, which I'll share with you guys the two I recommend. So not only is it going to allow me to do twice the amount of dials, like through your cell phone, it's very difficult to get in 25 dials an hour or through a landline. So with a power dialer, single line power dialer, I can get in my 50 dials an hour, but it's not about the dials. It's about the conversations. So, and this is why tracking is so important. You guys, like I'm having a conversation with a dude that reached out for some help in LA the other day. He's hitting the phones three and a half hours a day, but he's only listing a property a month. I'm like, dude, you should be listing one and a half properties a week. Something's wrong. Now, luckily, he tracked his data. He had a 2.8% dial to conversation rate. I'm like, dude, you should be at 10% or above. You know, but right there, because we had that, we we're able to pinpoint where the sickness was, yeah, right, or, or where the area for improvement is and go out there and fix that immediately. So it's not a matter if, it's a matter of when you're doing a lot of dials from your cell phone or even a landline or even a built-in you know, dialer inside of a CRM that doesn't have good anti-spam tech. It's just a matter of time before your number gets flagged as spam. And we all get it. Like how many phone calls do you guys all get every day that say potential spam? And then just think about what do you do when those calls come in? It probably ignore or block, right? So, okay, if you, you're going to get flagged, if you don't have a dial that has good anti-spam tech, you're going to have low conversation rates. So um, Arch Agent and Mojo are the best two dialers that have the best anti-spam tech out there right now. So like an example, Arch Agent, even though it's a single line power dialer, they're rotating five different numbers with five different IP addresses. And the second one gets flagged to spam, it yanks it out. So it keeps my conversation rate in that 10 to 15% range. Because again, it's not about the dials. It's really about the conversations, right? So, um, um, but yeah, then from there, and then I want to just make sure that we're staying consistent with those. Because if you want to, if you don't want the roller coaster in your business, you know, if you want consistent business flow coming in month after month, that all boils down to your consistent daily right actions that you're taking. I want to tell you one of the reasons why I joined and I just love Cancel is that I can get 100% commission, I get revenue share, and I get stock. I am making thousands of dollars every single month in revenue share and stocks. And I now don't have to work nights and weekends on real estate anymore. You know, I've actually never been to a real estate agent's retirement party, and I want to be the first one that people are coming to at a young age. And I want to share with you some of my favorite resources. So if you go to joincanzel.com slash free, there's a couple that I want you to download. One is a 20 free lead generating PDF. It's gonna help you generate leads for free that you can download, as well as there's one on how to double your business. I don't want you to miss it. Go download it today. Joincanzel.com slash free. Mm, so good. Let's talk about the commitment of, you know, right now I'm, I have a lot of team leaders that are getting frustrated because they're saying, you know, I'm just not going to pay for leads anymore for my team because the the people are not following up on the leads that they're supposed to. You know, I'm giving them things to do. They're just not calling. They'll call one time. They never follow up with the lead any, anymore. So now they just want to throw the baby out with the bathwater and go, I'm not paying for leads. How would you address that? Yeah. So number one, and, and I'm not saying this to be a jerk. I'm saying this because I care, you know, um, but it's not your agent's fault. It's your fault, right? Um, and I'm not saying that you have, look, you can have different models. Like I mean, within my real estate team that I run here in Phoenix, Arizona, we have a leads given division and then I have a non-leads given division. So now both get everything, you know, all the same support, all the same equipment, all the same everything. But 
those that are getting my leads, there are certain protocols that need to be followed, which I'll get into here in a minute. Um, but they're going to be on, uh, uh, the split's going to be bigger on that than, okay, if I have my non-leads division where they get everything that we provide from as, as a team, you know, support, equipment, training, everything but leads. Okay, they're just on a little bit better of a split, meaning a little bit more, in the, like, you know, 70-30 versus a 50-50 as an example, right? Um, but if you are running a leads given model, like, look, and again, back 2012 through middle 2022, you could get away with lacks of days ago follow up and, and just because there was just an abundance of low hanging fruit that is all dried up. So then from there, it's like, okay, there's got to be clear, concise expectations of what must happen. So when I bring on agent for my leads given model, like I tell them of, hey, look, this is more than a, more of like a job than it is an independent contract relationship here. You know, so so there's very we have very clear, concise like okay, here's what you have to do, when you have to do it, how you have to do it, where you have Maybe to do it. Things like what are some of the things that you're expecting from your person that you're giving leads? What are some of those expectations you're expecting from them? So they have to follow my exact follow protocol to a T, and if they don't follow it to a T every single time, each and every day, they're cut off leads. Now each lead source is going to be different. Right. So let's just let's just say it's a pay per click Facebook lead, you know, right. Uh, uh, whether it be Facebook, Instagram or Google pay per click. Um, um, OK, within that same day, they need to call that lead, you know, because that's not so much. That's a longer term nurture lead. So I'm not so concerned where we're like Zillow. It's like, OK, you have to have certain answer rates now. So and I'll just use Facebook lead as an example. So within that same day of them giving that lead, OK, you got to call that lead now. And we'll have this set up in their CRM already, but where it's Okay, they're going to get an autoresponder email, autoresponder text. They're automatically going to be set up on a thousand day email text strip campaign. So my agent then is responsible on day one of going in and set up property alerts and doing initial call number one. Now, then, because if you look at this, if we just deal with the law of averages and, and understand process is so important, then, okay, if you have a 10% dial the conversation rate, which is really damn good today. So, okay, it's going to, on average, take 10 times of reaching out to that same lead before you get them on the phone. Then I know on average, it's going to take five no's before you get your yes to set an appointment with that lead. So on average, it's 60 reach outs and six conversations to set one appointment with the same lead. So we have our no time frame st uh, uh, call established protocol that they follow. That's in place. So we have initial conversation. We've identified timeline, identified goal, set appointment if able or appropriate, if unable or appropriate, because we know timeline and goal that dictates what the fall protocol is going to be after that, whether it be under six months, six to 12 months, over 12 months. So let's just say that no time frame established. Right. That's they're going to be tasked to call day one every other day for 14 days and every 21 days for the first year. So then, OK, what am I inspecting? What I expect? I'm not going to micromanage my agents. I'm not going to babysit them. I have the systems in place that manage my people. My job is to manage the systems that manage the people and hold the people accountable. So their daily task queue has to be cleared out every single day inside their CRM and their trackers must be updated every single day. And if they miss one day on that. Right. And I tell them this up front that this is you communicating to me that I'm loading you up with too many leads that you're too overwhelmed, that you can't clear out your daily task queue and update your daily tracker. That is you without having to tell me. That's just you verbally through your actions communicating to me that you're too overwhelmed so I have no choice but to shut you off for the next seven days. Now, over the next seven days, that's a probationary catch-up period of time, right? So you got to prove yourself over that next seven days, get caught up, and then boom, if you want to get turned back on, as long as you know everything's done right and, and done properly, okay, we'll turn you back on. You know, um, if they if they don't, okay, then they're going to be off and definitely until we have different ways that they can prove themselves to get back on if they choose to. You know, but a lot of people, okay, like in my, the tests I put them through, it's like in my leads given division, you know, 30% don't even make it through initial onboarding. And then of those, only 50% pass our initial tests. Like I make them prove themselves that they're hungry. Because when you're, you know, like, okay, I have a big, you know, we have a big Zillow account and and I got to pay you know, that's a lot of damn money that I'm having to invest in them. So if they're not hitting, like if I'm, I look at every agent, think of it like any investment. Okay, you're investing in this agent up front, And if they follow this precise protocol, okay, you're going to get an ROI and you all win. Right now, if they go above and beyond and they really master the process, they master that skill set, and you're getting a higher return, okay, it's going to make sense for me to pour more into that investment. You know, so the other day I'm in a meeting with a couple of my agents and one of my agents is converting at, you know, 4% with this lead source says to me, I need more leads. I'm like, okay, I get that. And I understand that. That's what most people think. But then I pointed at, so we'll call her agent A. Then I point over at agent B. I'm like, okay, agent B, same leads, same source, same system, same training, same team, same market. Everything's the same. Agent B over here is converting at 16%. 
Now they're converting at 16% because they've mastered the process and they've mastered the skill sets to go out there and convert very high with this lead source. So if they had the same amount of leads that you have, they'd be making four times the amount of money that you're making with the same amount of leads. So I'm going to ask you, do you really need more leads or do you need to master the process and the skill set? She's like, you're right. And you master the process and the skill set. I said, yeah, and you get up to 16%, we'll load you up with as many leads as you could ever you know, possibly fathom. But it's not a lead issue. It's a process and skill set issue. But we've got it. You, you got You got to you got to inspect what you expect and you got to run a tight ship. Otherwise, you're going to get crushed and lose money. Let's talk about the lead sources and we've got to wrap up after that. But if you could share your screen and give us the exact kind of things that you're doing on Facebook or some different strategies that's working to get leads right now. Okay, so so, and I'm not gonna. I know you tell me some rescue, but because I want to give you know as much as I possibly can, I'll just explain it really quickly. So okay. this is gonna depend. Okay, we want buy side or sell side, and get on timeline. So there's five niches, and I, I said this earlier: five niches that are going to lead to the the. Again, we're thinking about who has the highest probability of buying or selling in this marketplace, right? Um, so on the seller side, we got expireds, we got for sale by owners, we got absentee owners, which is my favorite niche. I'll keep repeating that because I think that's something that everybody should be going after, right? Absentee owners, um, which also also leads into buy side acquisitions too. Um, um, going after those investors. Then we got divorces. Then we got pre foreclosure. Those are hands down the hottest listing sources down this market. Then on the buy side, um, um, you know, open houses, we're still pounding those, but our strategy has had to change. So, you, and this is what we got to look at. Okay, who is our ideal client? So, yeah, open houses might be a general strategy that we've done before, just like Facebook ads. So, I'm still doing those things, but how I'm doing them has greatly changed. So as an example, in my market in Phoenix, Arizona, we went from being one of the most affordable markets in the country to one of the least most affordable. So I'm really dealing in that. There's not much under 600000 anymore. So then I'm like, okay, who can afford to buy in my marketplace? So I'm, I'm coming up with my ideal buyer client. Okay, this is going to be 40 to 55-year-old married couples because they're in peak income earning years. You know, if you're not making 200000 plus household income, it's very difficult to buy in my market. So, okay, it's 40 to 55 55-year-old married couples, last move up purchase of their lifetime. They usually have kids still junior high, high school. Yo, so okay, I know they're going to be in that six hundred thousand, nine hundred thousand dollar price point. I know the cities, the zip codes, and the neighborhoods specifically that they want to be in, and the type of product that they want. So I'm going to do my open houses specifically. It's like that movie, Fill the Dreams, right? Build it, and they will come. Do the open house on the type of product that the ideal buyer that you're looking for, based on your market, right? It has the highest probability walk in that door. So we we had to get very, very picky and strategic with how we're identifying open houses. Then when it comes to Facebook ads, my Facebook ads themselves haven't changed, right? Like you give people what they want. You like, I you mean, the verbiage on there, you know, picture of, of, you know, an amazing house, whether it be the front of the house or the backyard, everybody wants swimming pools in my market. So always, you know, it's just like the images to capture their eye. Um, um, you know, the ad itself, the verbiage on the ad, something like, you know, wow, check out these amazing homes currently for listed for sale and, you know, Phoenix metro area, all featuring four plus bedrooms, are 2,400 plus square feet, four plus bedrooms, three plus baths with sparkling swimming pools, all currently between doing $600,000, dollars Click the learn more button. Like the ad itself is nothing special, but it's the targeting of the ad. So I'm starting to look at, okay, in my market, the house that was 350 six years ago is now worth 850. So for the locals and with average household income in my local market, they're the price of the market. Average household income is like 80 Gs when you're talking a $600,000 plus average price point. Yeah, right. So, okay, I'm looking at, okay, who is my market a win for? So then I went out there and identified, okay, what are the top 10 states and what are the metros within those states that my market is a win for? So like an example, where I'm having the best success today is running ads because we got a lot of people moving from California, but California is a big state. So I need to see, okay, what metros within those states. So we got a lot of people moving from more specifically San, like the San Francisco Bay Area, right? So my average client that's relocating from San Francisco Bay Area to Phoenix yeah, right. Here's here's what here's their situation. They're living in a three bed, two bath, thirteen hundred square foot, hundred year old house that's worth one point five million today, but they no longer feel safe even letting their kids go play in the streets because all the homeless populate, you know, all of that. And this is their words, not mine, right? Um, you know, um, so then from there, they're coming here and buying, going from a thirteen hundred square foot, hundred year old house to buying a brand new home that's four or five thousand square feet for eight fifty. That's completely tricked out. So they're they're downgrading financially, but they're massively upgrading with quality of life and lifestyle. You know, so for them, they're like, dude, this is a freaking win. This is a song. So I'm targeting markets like, you know, Seattle, Washington, 
San Francisco Bay Area, people are experiencing that where they're having you know enough pain with their current situation. My market is a pleasure that they want to get to, but they're in a situation where this is a this is a song for them, this is a win for them. Versus locals are like, screw this, this is ridiculous, right? So it really comes down to the you know how we're targeting and who we're targeting, you know, based on those activities. Um, and then yeah, any 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 and what I call intentional online style ads are working really good. So when I say intentional online marketing, I'm talking about Zillow. Realtor.com, right? Where people are going there with intent to really just replace the modern day sign call. Like if somebody's completely out of this housing market, they're not going to be going on Zillow. And maybe they are, maybe they're dreaming, but they're not going to be inquiring to the realtor to set up a showing. Yeah. So our conversions on those are, are, are phenomenal right now. Let me ask you, for those who are listening that are like, you know, I have been a customer service agent, really. For a long time, I just kind of sit back, wait for people to call me. I provide great service, you know, and so they they have not done a great job of being a prospecting real estate agent. There are some, you know, like with the company that you just suggested, the super empower uh, dot com, they have like virtual assistant pricing where you can hire a virtual assistant to do some of those cold calling for you. Have you tried that or have you seen anyone do that with success? Because some people out there are like, listen, you know, know thyself. They're like, I'm not going to make these calls. I know me, but I have, you know, I have the money that I can, you know, invest in having someone do these calls for me. What would you say for that? I would say um, right now, because skill set is more important than any other time in my 20 years of doing this. Um, that I do not see any, I've not seen personally or any evidence with, you know, I've got 850 coaching clients all throughout the United States right now that I coach on a high level. I haven't seen anybody having success right now in this market with outsourced VAs or ISAs because that skill set level is going to be very low. You know, now previous market, yeah, we saw some okay results there with ROI would be okay. You know, but my suggestion would either be learn that to acquire that skill set and become a, you know, become damn good at that. Or go partner with somebody, you know, um, whether that be with a team or somebody's business that maybe they have that skill set, but then you can do the part of it that you love and you're splitting those deals, partnering that business, you know, if you're refusing to do it because you either acquire that skill set or look, I mean, that's why I have a team and, and leads get, and I'm not trying to recruit anybody to my team obviously here, but you know, it's like, okay, look, if like somebody comes to, you know, our, our leads given department, they just have to sit here all day long. And, and answer the phone with people wanting to go set up showings and they could do that customer service business. But then, okay, just to be, just to understand this is, okay, like Zillow is going to take 35% off the top of that. Then we're going to split that 50, 50 with our agents. So, okay, my agents might be only making three grand per, you know, right. Um, uh, maybe a little bit more than that. So you're making a lot less, but it's easy to go out there and then pop four or five deals a month. Yeah. Right. Um, where then you can just be that customer service. So and that's what we have to have self-awareness of dealing in realities of, Okay, like, what am I willing to do? What sacrifices am I willing to make? What, what skill sets am I willing to go out there and acquire? And what am I best suited? Because I have a lot of agents that come work for me that make a hell of a lot more money, even though they got all the splits involved, but they make a lot more money because they're able to play to their skill sets in their, their comfort zone. You know, um, um, now, could they go make more money on their own? Sure. But they historically haven't been able to because they're not willing to do the things that they have to do to make money on their own. Well, and it just goes back to this. You, If you're not willing to be a prospecting agent, fine, know yourself. Then you have to do marketing. You have to spend money on these leads like the Facebook leads where the phone is calling you. You have to do one or the other. If you're not willing to make the calls, like you said, you either join a team that, that has those leads coming in or you have to then decide that you're going to be a marketing agent. You're going to spend the money on the leads and have those leads coming to you. Yeah, and I can say one thing is that I personally believe in my heart that Josh Smith is the best coach that you can possibly get. And I know a lot of you are like, well, you guys are really amazing friends and you're just saying that. I'm telling you honestly, I believe with all my heart, he is the best real estate coach out there. And I believe that if you're listening to this, it's also the most reasonably priced with the highest value. And so I want you to tell people if they're listening right now, how can they get involved? Because 
right now you need a coach. Like like you said, before it was like things were coming to you. Now you've got to hire someone to help you take it to the next level. How does someone get involved with your coaching program? Yeah. So um, what I recommend that you guys do, because I understand too that there's, you know, a lot in a situation right now they can't afford coaching, you know, as well. And and so if you go to my website, gsdmode.com, or I'll give you another website, they can go to www.gsdmode.com forward slash Zoom call. Um, I'll do, and right now I'm offering these, you know, right now through my podcast, but a one hour free Zoom coaching call with you about your business. And then on there, you know, I can walk through what my coaching program entails. If it's a fit for you, great. Everything I do, zero pressure. But, you know, 50, 55 minutes of that call, we're going to spend about your business, where your business is at, what you're currently doing, what your 12-month goals are, what your long-term goals, dreams, and visions are, what your biggest obstacles are. And then that way, based on your own unique situation, I can map out what my recommended strategy is for you to get from where you're at to where you want to go in the quickest, most effective, efficient, profitable manner. So, you know, if you want to schedule an hour free Zoom call with me personally, where we can do a deep dive in your own business, you can do that again at gsdmode.com. You'll see a banner up there, or you can go directly to the site at gsdmode.com forward slash Zoom call. That is amazing. You guys absolutely should take advantage of that immediately. Like do not pass go, do not collect $200, do that right away. Well, Josh, every minute I get to spend with you is a complete honor, and I just really appreciate your time. Thank you so much for being yeah, with thank us. Thank you. Yeah, it's been, been an honor. All right, keep crushing you guys. All right. Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe, leave a rating and a review so we can get this out to more agents. And tune in next week for another power-packed episode. This is the Millionaire Real Estate Podcast.